Hi everybody, my name is Mark Korsak. I'm the community advocate with Linode. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, setting up your server environment, just how you want it. Uh, so being here at Ford.js has been a great experience so far, and a lot of people that have come up to our sponsor table. Uh, I've noticed a lot of you are more coders rather than like kind of server administrators out there. Uh, so I want to take this short talk to, rather than kind of delving uh, in heads first into server administration, uh, going into the ins and outs of it, which can be a whole other uh, entire conference on its own, really. I uh, just want to talk about a different way to kind of go about setting up your own server, to kind of just like, spark your minds about it. Hopefully you guys can take away some of this and think about like, Maybe I could set up my server that way or working with others and community building, so uh, that's what I'll be talking about. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about a technology that uh, Linode has called Stack Scripts. So uh, Stack Scripts is our approach, it's like infrastructure as a code, which basically means uh, you're taking your infrastructure of servers and making it basically a like code. So instead of kind of clicking around in your manager dashboard, uh, creating servers, uh, deploying distributions, you're doing it all where you more feel comfortable. So basically, I don't know uh, about any of you, but this is where I feel comfortable is basically command line. So uh, rather than kind of clicking around, I just want to kind of get right in there, have control over what I'm making, and pulling things more like in kind of text space and just. Uh, I just feel more comfortable like that, so it's what I'm used to, uh, and anyway, so uh, we're going to talk about what makes a stack strip. So while you can deploy a server on its own, uh, deploying a server would be kind of giving a Linux distribution like Ubuntu, CentOS. Uh, a stack strip instead is an alternate way of deploying a server where uh, when it creates your server, it's going to run through a script called a stack script, which is uh, something that you write ahead of time. And it's basically going to say that when your server is created, run through this script line by line and do these actions. So basically, you don't then have to go into your server, log in via SSH, and do these commands step by step. Instead, the script is going to run every single time uh, you create a new server from that stack script, and all of a sudden, that hour of work is now reduced to about a minute or so. Uh, so a stack script can be made in any kind of language. Uh, most often than not, you'll see them written in Bash, however you can write them, anything like, say, uh, PHP, maybe even JavaScript as well. Uh, and they have a modular structure in the fact that uh, while you could just make a stack script be just one long script, you can make them modular and such that uh, you can create many smaller stack scripts and have all, like one stack script and reference each of the other ones. So I'll show you uh, an example of that in just a moment. Uh, and since they can be modular uh, in how they're made, you can collaborate with others. So instead of one person making a stack script, you can have two uh, different people each make their own stack scripts and then one that references both of them. So say uh, you create uh, like how your server is going to be updating all of its applications when it's deployed. Uh, you create pulling all of your information from our master server. So uh, preparing it basically for your own websites and applications. And tutorials on making stack scripts can be found on our documents website at linode.com slash docs. Uh, so community building is basically that when you make your stack script on our site, it's going to start off as private, but you can make it public. And when you make it public, all of a sudden now every Linode customer can both see your stack script, uh, can see like, how it's written basically. They actually get to see the entire source code, uh, see what kind of distributions you've made it uh, to work with, and they can deploy it on their own. So, uh, so you can make, like, Linode has a couple of stack scripts that we make ourselves for our customers to use, such as a LAMP stack script or a WordPress stack script. Uh, but now all of a sudden, like somebody else could say, I like your stack script, but I want to make it a little bit different. So you can take our Linode uh, LAMP stack script, make some tweaks to it, and then make your own and deploy that out to the public. And then you can see how many uh, different downloads and deployments it has. And it's kind of almost taking like a community and social media approach to server building in a sense. Now, uh, Al, as I mentioned, like with uh, different kind of modular approaches to it, uh, it's almost kind of like seen as uh, recipes for servers. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, different stack when you uh, run a web server is like a LAMP stack or a LEMP stack, which basically means LAMP is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. They're all very simple technologies that you would see on most web servers. So instead of making one stack script that just goes through and does everything for a LAMP server, you could have a stack script that installs Apache, a stack script that installs MySQL, and a stack script that installs PHP. And then your LAMP stack script can basically just say, include Apache stack script, include MySQL stack script, and include PHP stack script, and that's it. So all of a sudden, your LAMP stack script there is now only basically three lines of code. And then you can have three different people each make those three stack scripts up there. 
But then a LAMP stack script is similar to LAMP, uh, except they swap out Apache uh, web server for Nginx. So it's actually going to be using the same exact stack scripts as MySQL and PHP, but it's not going to pull over the Apache stack script in there and include file. Instead, it's going to say include the Nginx stack script. So it's a way that you're getting to reuse your different codes and stack scripts, working with other people, all, or all contributing their own kind of parts of the server administration here, and creating a different like, recipe at the end of it. And then once you do have your stack scripts, you can then deploy them automatically through uh, our API. Uh, I have an example of our uh, creating a Linode from stack script here on the right here, and then also our Linode command line interface. So uh, if you're more interested in keeping it within code, you can actually uh, use our entire control panel via code itself. Uh, so that way you don't even have to go to our manager. You can actually just set up your account and then just uh, use our API, use our command line interface, and you never have to leave uh, where you're most comfortable with code. So. It's a little bit of a short uh, talk here, but I just want to let you know that uh, thanks for coming. And uh, if you are interested in kind of more server administration, then come down to our uh, desk down in the sponsor area. I believe it's in the social hall. And then uh, we're giving out 50 hours of free credit so you guys can try some servers on your own and uh, get looking at some, uh, some stack strips at linode.com slash stack strips. Check out our tutorials and uh, just hopefully, like, think of what you want to make on a server that can be deployed over and over again and who you want to share that with. And maybe people will see your stack strip as well and make some uh, suggestions to it and implement it in their own as well. Thanks. Any questions? Yes? It's, uh, so it's a... Similar idea concept that might have been done like other ways, like with Ansible, it's another like uh, infrastructure as a code service. But Stack Strips itself are uh, is a Linux proprietary thing, but technically it's all commands that you can run on a server by hand over and over. So you could probably mimic it in other things, but the actual name is Stack Strip, and the platform it's made on is all handmade on Linux infrastructure. Now, I haven't used uh, Puppet and Chef too much, but I say like one of the biggest advantages of using Stack Strips is uh, it's really easy to jump into. So a lot of the other uh, like server command interfaces, we're going to need like a master server to deploy out to your uh, different slave servers, where stack strips are literally can just be typed into a web browser to get it going. And then the community aspect where you can search thousands of stack strips already made right there uh, and use them yourself. So uh, I use it as a way to kind of help give shortcuts to new people to Linux. So for instance, if I'm going out to a hackathon, I might prepare my own stack strip to like kind of tailor it to like say the technologies I know that they're going to be using so I can go type up a quick stack strip and then when they're saying I don't know how to set my new server, I can just make this quick text document right in my uh, web browser on Linode's website and then give them a link to that. And so I'd say the uh, biggest advantage of that is the uh, barrier of entry is next to zero and the community aspects is, are really easy to do and it works right within our manager. Hmm? Yes? Uh, it's a little bit different. So Docker's kind of like encapsulating your entire virtual machine and then kind of deploying it where uh, stack trips are almost more like, like instructions for kind of starting your virtual machine. So you're not actually having to store that image anywhere. Instead, you're just storing the directions on what to do to your virtual machine. So there's no need to kind of store it anywhere first like Docker. Anybody else? Yes? Yeah, so when you actually deploy a stack strip, so... Uh, like, for instance, Linode's WordPress stack strip, when you run it uh, after you go into your manager, deploy a new server, deploy with stack strip, deploy with the WordPress stack strip, it's going to ask you, like, your site name, uh, MySQL password, and all of that are actually fields that are uh, defined in your stack strip file. So you can actually say, like, before it's created, ask the user that's deploying this uh, what they want their domain names to be, so how to create their folder structure for their Nginx configuration. So you can actually prompt the user for different, uh, filling up various fields to help them customize it further. So that way, you're kind of just providing the bone structure for it, but they, they can kind of tailor it to their own based on what input's needed for that script. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's most often uh, written in Bash. However, as long as your machine can run it, you can write it in any language. So you could actually uh, start off a stack trip by saying install PHP and then run this PHP code. So you can do it with any kind of programming language. And you can actually run conditionals in there too, like so saying uh, if you run a... Uh, an odd version of Linux that for some reason doesn't have a PHP in their library. It'll just kind of like skip that PHP code and there's all kinds of logging built in with Stack Trips too, so you can kind of output to the console or to a log file saying like, had to skip this part of the code due to not being compatible with this distribution or, but you can actually set in the Stack Trip uh, settings as well, which distributions it's compatible with to kind of give some, like the user some kind of like where, like 
uh, notice as to if, if they can use it or not. So uh, Bash will run fine by default, just like it's on an operating system. But uh, uh, you can define, like, you can install any kind of package manager, or I'm sorry, use the package manager to install any kind of services you need to run different code, and then run that code all in the same script. And you can do that from an external file or by writing it, writing the stack script itself. Um, yeah, it needs to be written in that, but you can kind of trick it some ways to actually like have the stack strip create a file like something.php, fill it all in there so you're typing it in the stack script, and then run that file. So it's like a way to kind of trick it by using Bash to kind of encapsulate a different language as well. So uh, we actually have some uh, examples of that exact kind of way to go about it in our uh, docs and tutorials on lino.com slash docs. Anybody else? Great. Thank you very much for having me here at 4JS, and uh, I'll, I'll be down here at the sponsor booth giving out free shirts and uh, server credit. <laughs>